You know, memory overclocking seems to be mysterious to a lot of people, and it is kind of a pain in the bottom. But today we're going to take a few minutes to look at DDR5 overclocking. Here I've taken some uh, DDR5-6200 uh, team group memory and overclocked it to 6800-CL30. So we're going to run a quick Beta64 test here in Windows 10 LTSC. Take a look at those numbers, and then we're going to jump into the BIOS and take a look at the settings that I have there. I have the CPU running at 5.2 gigahertz. That's just kind of my daily overclock. It's a pretty good CPU sample. Only takes about 1.275 volts for 52 on all core. I have the uh, E-Cores running at uh, 42x. So anyway, we'll give this a minute to run. After we look in the BIO settings, we're going to boot into Windows 7 and look at the uh, difference in memory latency. The read, write, and copy speeds are within a margin of error being the same, but the latency is much better on Windows 7, which is no surprise. Windows 7 does a lot of things better than Windows 10 and certainly better than Windows 11. The memory uh, latency is higher on Windows 11 than any of these operating systems. And then we'll jump into Linux right after that and uh, confirm that everything's working as it should be. So there we are. Take a note of those latency values. Not too bad, but we'll compare those with Windows 7 when we reboot. All right, we'll jump right into these BIOS settings here. You can see what I have. I'm going to run through them quickly so this isn't a long video. You can see I've got 52 on all core, 42 on the E cores, 45 on the ring. Take a look at the uh, voltage settings that I have applied here. Almost everything uh, I have set manually. I do have the uh, L2 voltage for the E-Core is set to auto. I have some the uh, virtualization and BTD, BTD and AES instructions disabled. Let's take a look at the CPU configuration, what I have in here. You can see I have the power limits and the uh, long duration maxed out, the current maxed out. Most things set to auto, except for my voltage and power and current limits. All right. Let's take a look at uh, what I have set for LLC here real quick. I have mode 3 set for load line calibration. Now let's jump right into the memory timings for 6800 megahertz. So you can see I've got my main timings at 30, 40, 40, 28. You want to max out your TREFI at a high clock speed. That'll really add a lot to the stability. And it will take less voltage to do that. If you try to set the TRFC too low, it's generally not going to work well for you. So most of these secondary timings and uh, the termination configuration, that kind of thing is all set to auto. But what I do have, we'll see down here at the bottom, is that I have power down control disabled. That will help with your latency. So if you have an, any option to disable the power down control to do that. 
take a look at a few of these other menus here just to show you what's on them and what I have set. Now the PCIe the ASPM settings, you're going to want to set all these to auto. The factory defaults or the BIOS defaults is disabled and for whatever reason that causes the PCH on this motherboard to run extremely hot like yeah, up into the 80s. So set all those to uh, this, uh, I showed them there. So set that to auto. What I, that's what I was trying to think of on the the uh, power management. Let's see, I'm running legacy mode. Oops, that needs to be disabled. I don't use that. Secure boots disabled, of course. Already had a look at that. So what else are we going to take a look at? Uh, let's look at, uh, you can set your memory profiles here. You probably already know how to do that. Save your settings so that you can just reapply them anytime you want to. All right, let's jump out of here and go into Windows 7. using Grub Bootloader to load Linux or Windows. Let's run a quick memory benchmark here in Windows 7 so you can compare the how the latency is to Windows 10. It's, uh, it's much improved. Read, write, and copy, as I mentioned, uh, within a margin of error. So little that you'd never notice the difference. But the latency, you'd, you would notice the difference. So installing Windows 7 on a late model chipset like uh, Z690 was actually pretty easy on Z690. Z590 was the biggest trouble I had. Z490 was fairly easy too. But I, I purchased uh, an external optical drive, or, or actually an internal optical drive, a SATA drive, installed from D DVD and then installed all the USB and NVMe drivers and that kind of thing within uh, Windows. I did apply some updates through slip streaming and that kind of thing, but I just found it was faster and easier to just install it from from DVD using a PS2 keyboard and mouse and then install the drivers within Windows. It was a lot less hassle. Most of the drivers uh, you can get from WinRaid, uh, WinRaid forums. A gentleman by the name of Canon Kong mods drivers there. I've done a little bit of my own driver modding like for the Intel i225B. I modded that myself. The driver for that, uh, Nick. But uh, yeah, the USB audio drivers uh, for Realtek. Um, that this motherboard uses are bundled in his uh, AMD Ryzen drivers. So I grabbed it from there, but all of the Intel USB drivers, chipset drivers, and that kind of thing came from WinRaid. So take a look at these uh, latency readings. They're measurably lower than Windows 10, which is really interesting. And if we were to run this benchmark in Windows 11, the latency is higher yet than Windows 10.
So, anyhow. Yep, Windows 7 is fully functional. Everything is working exact, exactly as it should. All the drivers are installed. The only exception is uh, the Wi-Fi 6. I can't get that working. But everything else is great. I have the Wi-Fi 6 disabled in the BIOS. I don't use Wi-Fi anyway. I use Wired LAN for everything. So, yep, Windows Experience Index, WI. Everything is working like a charm. All right, so let's jump out of here and jump into Linux. Take a look in there. So I normally use uh, Cinnamon Desktop, whether I'm using Mint or Pop OS, but I recently started playing with K KDE. Really hate the way Windows is going with newer versions of Windows 10, especially Windows 11 is horrible. And Windows just hasn't been very good at all since Windows 7. So I'm really focusing on trying to sharpen my Linux skills and get used to using that because I can see the day coming soon where I'm just not going to want to play the Windows game anymore. It just sucks too bad. I've been doing a lot of gaming on Linux and I'm amazed that every title just about that I've tested in my uh, Steam library with Proton uh, runs great on Linux. Hardly any problems at all. Pretty amazing. Other than liking benching and so many of like 3D mark benchmarks and things like that, um, that's really the only reason I stick with Windows anymore so that I can do my benching hobby. So let's uh, see our memory is showing 6800 Linux is reading that correctly. So it's recognizing the memory speed. Power management in Linux I don't care for very much. It always down clocks even if I disable the power management. Uh, it's pretty aggressive at trying to save power, which I don't like, but the CPU does run exactly as it should. KDE is kind of different. I, I'm used to the Windows 7 type menu and prefer it, but here again, I'm trying to condition myself to get used to something a little different. I'm not sure I like this too much. It kind of reminds me of uh, Windows 8. Remember all the tiles, which kind of sucks. I don't really care for that. I'm probably going to go back to a standard Windows type menu, but KDE, KDE looks really nice. It's got a lot of transparency and things like Windows 7, which I really like. So I'm not finding my system profiler benchmark tool in here. I thought I had it installed, but I'm not seeing it. Maybe I have I just recently reinstalled Linux, so maybe I didn't install that yet. But you can use like Green with Envy to overclock the GPU. There's a CPU frequency utility that works really nice where you can adjust, adjust the CPU clocks up and down. So you see this isn't showing running at 5.2 gigahertz, but if we actually do a CPU benchmark here and load all the cores, we will see it jumps right up to what it should be running. So there we go. Fully functional multi-boot system running with memory at 6800 CL30. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.